Hmm. Well, this thing's quite giant. What's going on, you guys? Welcome to another awesome video where I'll be showing you how you can use SolidWorks 3D printing to create something awesome like this helmet. This is a fully wearable helmet of the Iron Giant, which I 3D printed entirely. The idea of this project was to show how you can create very basic shapes and a very basic helmet in SolidWorks and then use other prop making techniques to create details, organic details such as dent or weld marks, and then how to weather something to make it look old and dirty. Projects like these take a little bit of time, but when they're finished, it is awesome. So the main body has been 3D printed. All these little welds here is actually hot glue. The little rivets here are actually little rubber silicone pad things that you put under things to stop them from moving. The eyes are printed in a multi-material with a black outline and a natural PLA to get that look. Also allows you to put a light inside, so if you really want it to light up, it can. Uh, so, let's get into how I made this in SolidWorks, the techniques and the problems I had with printing it, how I went to, into assembling it, how I went into putting all the details like the welding and that, how I made the dent, and then how I went about finishing it. So, we hopped into SolidWorks. First off, I created a kind of dome shape with a cylinder under it to kind of represent the diameter of my head basically measuring from the back of my head to my nose I then created a shell over that and I begun by doing the mohawk of the eye and giant I then created a plane to create the eyes so they go outwards instead of straight out because straight out looks a bit weird All of the techniques here are just basic SolidWorks commands. I used the sweep command for the little outlines of the eyes, created the bolts in the end, added some pretty chamfers, finished off the details on the eyes internally, made cavities where the eyes can fit in. I then cut a flat plane so they can print easily without support. I then made little markers on the little eyes just that I know which eyes on which side and which way they need to be orientated. I then split it up into four pieces which I think would fit. I then test fit one of them in my slicer and then begun slicing up everything and then saving it all one by one. Then I started printing them. How pretty are these time lapses? Wow. So everything was printed in a grey PLA from Rigid Ink on a original Prusa i3 MK2S. Almost every part took between 12 and 24 hours. This part here, however, was a fail. Now, I kept that fail to test everything on, such as paint, welds, dents, and everything. I used a two-part epoxy resin to glue everything together. Just mix two parts together, lather it on either side of it, and then put it together and closed it. Held it in place with a bit of masking tape until it dried for about an hour for each piece. So this took quite a bit of time then glued one half to the other and let it sit with gravity. I then used a basic kind of putty to fill up the, the gaps and to level everything off. I put this on very, very generously because I know it sands very well. So I'd rather put on too much, sand it off, then put too little and have to do it more than once. I then got to sanding it. I 
I then put on my first high coat primer on. Um, this kind of fills in all the gaps and shows where anything is needed. I lost the footage of me doing the actual weld, but this is how you do it. Just a simple hot glue gun in the crevice and slowly dab it on so it kind of creates a weld, put a bit of paint on it and it doesn't look like hot glue anymore, it just looks like a really messy weld. Depending on how much time you spend on this, you can either make it look like a really neat weld or a very messy weld, which I was looking, off, looking out for. I then put on a thin layer of grey primer just to kind of make it even, spot any defects or any areas that need a bit of extra attention. I then used rubber silicone dots which are actually used at the bottom of a lot of electronics to stop things from moving around. I bought a whole bunch of these just to create a rivet kind of look like it was almost bolted together. The technique I used to put them on was to just put it on one end, put the other one on the other end, find the midpoint and then find the midpoint between them and then that made it very fairly evenly spaced. It did feel a bit oily, so I used a bit of acetone and I used it just to wipe every single one before I painted it. To create the dents, I heated up the area with a heat gun and I used a golf ball which I then rolled on the surface and pushed in to create the dent. Worked out much better than I thought it would. I then used a black matte paint for the undercoat purely because when you paint silver over this any spots that you miss with the silver will then be highlighted with the black and it won't look bad it will look much better or look like it's a bit of dirt. When it came to doing the dirt I mixed a bit of black with white to make a nice little dark grey which I then just mashed all over the surface and then I used a bit of toilet paper and towel to just dab and wipe it away to make it seem like it was dirt that was wiped away. You kind of want to be random at this, you don't want to plan it, you just got to throw it on there and hope it looks good. If you don't like it, you wipe away and just try it again and you can get a nice little dirty look on it. the dent I added a little bit of brown just to kind of give it like it's almost rusting a little bit. To put the eyes in I just used some simple super glue there was no finishing on the eyes because they were printed in multi material. Super glue and some accelerator just to keep them where they need to be and done. <laughs> so this was the mannequin that I used. The reason why I wrapped it up in plastic was purely because if I didn't the chemicals in the spray paint would then disintegrate it or melt it. And there is the final product. I'm quite happy with the way it can be turned out. Using a simple LED light, which I'll then put underneath there just to show that it can actually light up if you put lights in it because I use the natural PLA for the eyes. So, I hope you learned a lot from this. I hope that you take these ideas and use them in various other kind of prop making things and would love to see them. 3D printing is more of a tool than a replacement for prop making. If you can use 3D printing to create the basic model and then carry on using your prop making techniques to do all the little details, you're gonna save a lot of time. I mean, there are a lot of areas where I could have cut down on material, cut down on size. There's a lot of things that can be still be done to this. But I wanna show you the basics of what you can do with just a couple of tools that most people will have. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Please like this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. The cool thing about this thing being so loose is that it's like a bobblehead. 
Let's go show my face. And cut. I'm sure I can do this. Uh, uh, 